For MetsMinors.net, this was a big day for the Mets and all Major League Baseball. This was the day they had to set their 40-man rosters um, to 40 men. A headline, deadline is 6 p.m. today, which is a few hours after this video is being recorded, to protect players from the Rule 5 draft. We're gonna, I'm going to run down the names of the players that could be put on the Mets 40-man roster. And as it turned out, you'll find out in this video who it was that the Mets selected uh, to go on the 40 men. So hit that subscribe button if you want to find out who it is. The deadline for teams to protect prospects from the December Rule 5 draft is today. Was today at 6 p.m. If the Mets don't choose to, to add any of the mentioned players to the 40 men roster, they'll be available to be selected on December 6th in the Rule 5 draft. Players signed at age 18 or younger need to be added to their club's 40 man roster in five seasons or they become eligible for the Rule 5 draft. Players who signed at age 19 or older need to be protected within four seasons. Here is a look at some of the notable players in the Mets farm system that are Rule 5 draft eligible. First up, right handed pitcher Justin Jarvis. Now I'm going to run down the names. I would mention there's only one player and one player only that was selected off of the, the minor league uh, uh, rosters that was selected for the 40-man roster. And I will get to it. Every name I'm going to be reading except for one was selected. They weren't. Right-handed pitcher Justin Jarvis. He was not selected. The Mets acquired a 23-year-old from the Brewers from Marcana at the trade deadline. And while he struggled following the trade in AAA, I would expect the Mets to add him to the 40-man roster. The former fifth-round pick had a 3.33 ERA and 10.8 Ks per nine innings and 14 starts at the AA level this season from before the Brewers. He was not selected. And in fact, David Stearns, who was the former general manager and an executive at, with, with the Milwaukee Brewers, he knows this player. Right-handed pitcher Coleman Crow, another player not selected. Another arm that the Mets got via trade this year, this time in the deal for Eduardo Escobar. The 22-year-old had a 1.88 ERA and four AA starts in the Angels' farm system for the trade. Unfortunately, Crow had Tommy John surgery in late July, early August this year, and is yet to pitch in the Mets system. Right-handed pitcher Joan De Suarez. The 23-year-old had an incredible run to finish out his season with 24 scoreless innings between High A Brooklyn and Double A Binghamton, including a seven-inning no-hitter that followed a six-inning no-hit start. Right-handed pitcher Brendan Hardy, the 23-year-old, is known for his high spin pitches and getting great extension on his delivery on the to the plate. The former 31st round pick had a 2.16 ERA and 54 strikeouts in 35 innings across three levels this year. Finishing with, well, finishing with only allowing two runs in eight and two thirds innings in Double A, uh, Binghamton. Hardy did struggle in limited time in the AFL this fall with a with a four run with four runs allowed in five and two thirds innings. Right-handed pitcher Eric Gorzian, the player not selected, a bullpen arm that the Mets certainly had hoped would be in the big leagues already. Gorzian has struggled with command and the long ball since getting selected in the fifth round of the 2020 draft. Or has he struggled overall to the tune of a 5.31 ERA this year in AAA? Though he did strike out 81 batters in 61 innings and tossed 11 scoreless innings with only two hits, allowed 22 strikeouts to finish out the season. Daniel Juarez, the small lefty with an interesting fastball, has a 2.50 ERA in his career with 5.5 hits per nine innings and 11.9 strikeouts per nine innings. He posted 2.37 ERA between high A and double A this season. Right-handed pitcher Wilkin Ramos. The Mets actually scooped up Ramos in the minor league portion of the Rule 5 draft last year. The 23-year-old had a 2.50 ERA and a ground ball rate over 60% and 57 two-thirds innings between Brooklyn and Binghamton this year. Now here is the only player only player that was selected by the Mets for the 40-man roster. And that is outfielder Alex Ramirez, who is considered a top 12, 13, a top 15 Mets prospect. 
20-year-old struggled mightily this season in 120 games for Brooklyn, but his potential is enough to likely warrant him still getting added to the 40-man roster. He was the only player selected by the Mets to be on the 40-man roster. Like I said, the rest of the players on this list that I'm reading to you were not selected. So they are now still in the Mets organization. They could be picked up in the Rule 5 draft next month. Uh, utility player Jeremiah Jackson. Certainly one of the more interesting cases they have to come into the Mets from the Angels in exchange for right-handed pitcher and relieve a Dominic Leone. A 23-year-old had a 802 OPS with 11 extra base hits and 6 stolen bases in 37 double-A games following the trade. The former second-round pick has played all three outfield spots and everywhere in the infield besides first base. His most career games come at shortstop. I would mention that he was a player that was uh, traded for by Mets former general manager Billy Epler. So obviously he was not there to prevent him from being moved because obviously, you know, Billy Epler was a was the general manager of the Angels. Okay. Outfielder Brandon McElwain. The former DI quarterback is strong defensive outfielder that posted 748 OPS between double A and triple A this season. The Mets depth in the outfield of the major league level is pretty weak. He was not selected. Infielder Luke Ritter. The Mets 2023 minor league home run leader with 27 might have been a late season call up if not for an oblique injury that shut his year down early. Again, another player that wasn't selected. 26 year old has played all four infield spots and, in, and left field. Outfielder Stanley Consuerga, another top 30 prospect for the Mets. The 23-year-old has some the best raw power in the Mets system as he set the Brooklyn Cyclones single-season home run record with 23 this year. However, he posted 7, 294 OP on base percentage and has yet to reach double A. Now, I have a whole bunch of listed names of players here. I'll just read the names. Uh, Hunter Parsons, Luis Moreno. Junior Santos, who had been a prospect of note. Hayden Sanger, who was voted the Mets' best, uh, uh, basically the minor league gold glove. He was not selected, which I think is interesting. He's a catcher. Vincent Perozo, Joe Swazi, William Lugo, who had been a prospect of note, but top 50 prospect. Uh, Junior Tillian, Tillian, Carlos Cortez, who had been a prospect years ago. Uh, that faded away. Robert Kalina, Jorge Ventura, who had been a prospect. Uh, Jeffrey Colon, Joel Lime, Ramirez, Tyler Thomas, Joss Hedgka, and Matt Allen. Matt Allen was drafted in 2019. He was the second selection of the Brody Van Wagenen uh, regime. And what's been interesting about him is he pitched in 2019. And he has not pitched since that time. So he's had to deal with two major surgeries, three surgeries in his career, two of which were Tommy John. He missed this year because of another second Tommy John surgery. He was a, a, a player that was a bonus player. They gave him extra money to pick him at a higher pick because there was thought that he was going to go to college. He has not pitched since 2019, so almost five years now. Uh, teams that draft the player must pay $100,000 to the club from which said player was selected. A rule 5 draft picks are assigned directly to the drafting club's 26-man roster and must be placed on outright ravers in order to be removed from the 26-man roster in the subsequent season. Should the player clear waivers, he must be offered back to his previous team for $50,000 and can be outrighted to the minors only if his original club does not wish to reacquire him. A Rule 5 draft pick can be placed in the Major League injured list, but he must be active for a minimum of 90 days to avoid being subject to the aforementioned roster restrictions in the next campaign. There are other ways you can manipulate a player, player's status. For instance, if a, if a team decides they don't want to keep a player at the, at the Major League level and they don't want to send him back, they can send him back to the other, uh, to his original team, and his original team and that team can work out a trade. So the team, and then the Mets, could, or say just for the Mets, for the example, were to select a player that's a Rule 5 player and say they like the player, and they say to the original team, say that the, the Blue Jays, 
They say to the Blue Jays, look, we like this player. He's been on our roster for maybe a month, but we like him a lot. We want to send him down to the minors. Would you like to make a trade? That's how some of this can be avoided uh, in that situation. So there, there are ways around this. It's a, it's a very unique um, way of drafting players. It also happens in the minor leagues. A lot of times, as it was reading, one of these players was a minor league uh, rule five draft pick. So you can also do this in the minor leagues as well. So you let me know what you think about this video. Of course, please hit that subscribe button for the prospect hut. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.